Hey everybody, today we're going to be seeing what happens to an anti-bubble in a vacuum chamber. And I'd like to thank LastPass for sponsoring this video. So this is a normal bubble, and what it consists of is air on the outside, a thin membrane of soapy water, and then air on the inside. So what would an anti-bubble be? Well, an anti-bubble would mean that there's water on the outside, a thin membrane of air, and then there's water on the inside. So a normal bubble has air on the outside, air on the inside, and a thin layer of soapy water. But an anti-bubble has water on the outside, water on the inside, and then a thin layer of air. So obviously a normal bubble has to occur in air, but an anti-bubble has to occur under the water because the outside of it is water. So it might seem that this would be very hard to make a thin air membrane sphere, but it's actually quite easy. Let me show you how to do it. And then after I show you how to do it, we'll see what happens to this thin spherical air membrane when we put it in the vacuum chamber. But before we find out what happens to the anti-bubble in the vacuum chamber, let me tell you a little bit about our sponsor for this video, LastPass. So I've been using LastPass for several years now. LastPass relieves the burden of having to remember all of your passwords. With LastPass, you don't have to write, reset, or even remember your password. LastPass stores all of your passwords and even autofills them when you go to any website where you have to log into. It even works on your mobile device. So basically anything that I need to log into, whether it's on my PC or my phone, I just go to it and if there's a password that I need to log into, LastPass will pop up and it will autofill the password. So basically I don't even need to remember any of my passwords. So I never get locked out of my important accounts. So with LastPass you get free unlimited password storage and also you get free unlimited multi-device sync. And one other thing that I love about LastPass is because you don't necessarily need to remember the passwords, you can make your passwords much more secure. So you don't have to choose your normal password of the Action Lab 123, but you can choose a password that looks more like this. So if you want to use LastPass like I do, click the link in my description below. And thanks again to LastPass for sponsoring this video. So you make an anti-bubble the same way you make a normal bubble, with soapy water but you use much less soap. So I have about 400 mils of water and some Ultra Dawn soap here. Put in about this much, see if that works. Okay, now once we've made our solution, let's just get a dropper here, and you'll see that I can have some normal bubbles on top, but watch what happens when I drop some water on it. Look what appears on the top for a second. Now these may look like normal bubbles, but actually they're not. It's a bubble of water on top of the water. Now this is almost an anti-bubble, but it's not completely surrounded by a membrane of air. It's only on the bottom part. So in order to make a full anti-bubble, that bubble of water has to be below the surface completely, and the membrane of air has to be completely around it. So in order to do that, all you do is squirt a little bit harder and it should shoot a bubble down below the surface. Okay, now watch this. So now this may look like a normal air bubble, but there's something different about it. The first thing to notice is it's not rising to the surface very fast. It's kind of just floating up very slowly. And then also watch what happens when I pop it. It seems like the bubble just disappeared. So here's how fast a normal air bubble rises. You can see how it just shoots to the top. So this bubble that you see here is not an actual bubble. It's not an air bubble, but it's actually an anti-bubble. And I should mention that the way I'm keeping it down is I'm blowing a jet of water on it. So that's keeping it down below the surface. So in order to prove that that was a sphere of water surrounded by a thin membrane of air, let me show you by putting some food coloring in this. So now the water that's going to be inside of my anti-bubble is now going to be red and the water outside should be clear or less red. Okay, here we go. You can see it there. 
Look at that. <laughs> so now you can clearly see the perfect sphere of red water on the inside, and then the perfect sphere of hollow air membrane, and then the water on the outside. So cool. Let's try another one. Ooh, that's a big one. Look at that. Look how cool that is. So now I'm really interested to see what would happen to that anti-bubble in a vacuum chamber because it's just this thin sphere of air with water inside, but in a vacuum, that thin sphere of air should expand. So what will happen to that sphere of water inside? Isn't that the coolest thing you've ever seen? A liquid water bubble inside a bubble, an anti-bubble. Now the hard part will be making the anti-bubble and then keeping it down under the water. So it's going to float up and it's going to hit the top surface of the water. So hopefully once it hits there, it'll just stay below the surface. So let's try to make an anti-bubble without it popping and then see how long it can last in the vacuum chamber. Okay, here we go. Let's try to make our anti-bubble. There's one. Trying to make a better one. Okay, it's on the surface there. Okay, is it growing? Seems like it might be getting bigger. The bubbles above it are definitely getting bigger. Oh, it popped. So let's try to do a red one. Okay, there it is. Okay, the vacuum is on. Oh, it popped. So we got down to around a third of an atmosphere. But what's interesting is the size of that sphere didn't actually change that much. Compared to the size of the bubbles that were on the surface of the water, it hardly changed at all. You could see how much those bubbles on the surface starting to grow, started to grow when we decreased the pressure in the vacuum chamber basically because the pressure inside the bubble was more, and so that bubble just started expanding as we decreased the pressure in the vacuum chamber. Now I know it's not just because it's underwater, because if you have just a bubble of air underwater, that bubble will still expand. And I know this because I put a balloon underwater in the vacuum chamber, and as the pressure decreases, the balloon still expands like normal. But the anti-bubble did not expand like that. It only changed a tiny little bit. And the reason that it only changed a little bit is number one, the volume of that bubble is actually really small. And so there's not a lot of volume to begin with and so you don't see as drastic of a change. And another reason is the surface tension of that bubble is very strong because you have two water membranes, the inner and the outer, and those are continually pulling on the bubble keeping it locked into that shape. Kind of like if I were just to stick a ping pong ball in there, the ping pong ball is actually strong enough to not expand at all, and so you don't see a big change in volume. So the stronger the membrane, the less change in volume you're gonna see. So it seems like that air membrane is actually pretty strong in there because we hardly saw any change in volume. So thanks to LastPass again for sponsoring this video. Remember to go check out LastPass by clicking the link in my description. 
So this was a really cool experiment. It showed that the anti-bubble doesn't expand that much when it's in the vacuum chamber. Nothing compared to the expansion of a normal bubble in a vacuum chamber, which is really interesting. Basically what that means is that that air membrane is actually really strong. So strong that it doesn't expand much even though the pressure decreases in the water around it. And thanks again for watching another episode of The Action Lab. I hope you enjoyed it. Remember to click the subscribe button if you haven't subscribed yet and hit the bell to be notified when my latest video comes out. And head over to theactionlab.com to check out the new Action Lab subscription box. And thanks again for watching and I'll see you next time.